Hey guys, Claire here. In today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. Now, in the last video, we talked about Harry and Meghan being spotted at a basketball game with some of the Archwell production staff. And for the fashion girlies, yeah, that pink linen pantsuit already sold out. <laughs> the Meghan effect is still going. Now, a couple of days after being spotted at the basketball game, Variety broke the story that Megan has officially signed with WME, which is one of the biggest and most powerful agencies in Hollywood. Which really flies in the face of a lot of these articles that the UK tabloids have been pumping out for, what, the past year or two or as long as Harry and Meghan had left you know Meghan's she's she's not welcome in Hollywood she's an outcast she's this she's that she's the other and for us to only find out that there have been so many of these agencies that have been courting her and she has now what three years after stepping back as a senior working royal has decided which one is the best fit for her and not only her but for our 12 productions as well so I am so excited to see more of Megan. I feel like with this signing, we're going to be able to see her a lot more. She's going to be doing more speaking engagements. She's going to be doing more projects. And I'm also very excited to see what that means for Archwell Productions. What other shows and projects will they be working on also? Will that mean that we may possibly get to have uh, Archwell um, social media account, maybe an Instagram account, sort of similar to Sussex Royal, but it's focused on Archwell? I don't know. Maybe we'll see, but I'm super excited for it. Now, for those of you who don't know, this agency is huge. Like I said, it works with people like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, um, Ben Affleck, Serena Williams. So the cream of the crop of Hollywood. Now, there also was an article um, and where Oscar De La Renta really talked about why they support Megan and her history with the brand. And I did a video before talking about my favorite looks of Megan's during her time as a working royal. And of course, you know, my favorite, favorite Oscar De La Renta look that Megan has worn is that gorgeous bird dress. <laughs> it's so beautiful. So I'm wondering, does that mean that we may possibly see her doing other events as an official face of the brand or maybe Dior because we know she likes to work with Dior and Oscar de la Renta. Maybe sometime in the future we'll be able to see that. Well, we know she's not going to the coronation and a lot of people think or have been hoping that they may see her at the Met Gala. I really don't think that's the case. I think if anything, maybe we'll see her wearing a stunning Oscar de la Renta or Dior piece for the upcoming award season. Remember, she has two awards coming up, so hopefully we'll see her at both of them. Now, we also got even more shocking revelations during Prince Harry's court case. Now, we briefly touched on the fact that Harry revealed <laughs> that William, behind the scenes, was doing his own case and got a huge payout from the tabloids while simultaneously discouraging Harry and Meghan from going forth with their lawsuits. And that's the thing, like some people would sort of twist the narrative and say, well, there's nothing wrong with William doing it this way and doing it behind the scenes. He doesn't have to talk about it publicly. But here's the thing, it's the hypocrisy of it all. Why are you discouraging Meghan and Harry to do essentially the same thing that you're doing? It's the audacity for me. And not only did he do that, especially when it comes to Meghan's case, him and his staff members, Jason Off especially, worked with all of these people in the Royal Rota to trash Meghan, to put out these narratives that Meghan's letter to her father is of public interest. While you're telling me the case concerning the future King of England who received what is uh, rumored to be a million dollar payout is not of public interest, but Megan's letter to her dad was? Again, it's a hypocrisy. 
going behind Harry and Meghan's back and having his staff member give personal information to the tabloids in an effort for Meghan to lose her case. And even with that sneaky, underhanded BS, she still won it. William is a piece of work. <sighs> explain it to me like I'm five is funny, but I'm going to explain it to you like the adult you are because yes, it is confusing. So my understanding is this. Back before 2012, when the phone hacking scandal lid was just blown off, particularly with News Corp, Rupert Murdoch and his team wanted to stop the bleeding. News of the world closing was part of that sacrifice. And also it was to say, yeah, it was all news of the world. Like that's the problem child, right? That will close it. We understand like nothing to see here. It's all good. Let's keep the sun rolling right along because my understanding is the prince's claims would have also placed blame on the Sun editorship, which would further have implicated Rebecca Brooks, who recall was arrested for conspiracy to phone hack, but was found not guilty on all charges. Not to mention the princes are obviously very high profile. And in the wake of Diana's death, the idea that these teenagers were being hacked is really gross. What's been alleged in court today is that the British royal family and Murdoch's media firm made an agreement sometime before 2012. Basically, the agreement was, we will not pursue litigation at this time if you promise sometime in the future to give an apology to the princes, which would effectively mean admitting to the phone hacking. And of course, the British royal family have their own reasons for not wanting to bring this to the courts. So it seems like Prince Harry wanted to get this formal apology from Murdoch before the wedding in 2018, before anyone was allowed any closer to Meghan, who was about to become a working royal. He allegedly had permission from his grandmother to do that, and they reneged. I'm not sure if this apology was supposed to be solely in private or if there was also going to be a more formal statement made to the public, but it appears that Prince William and his team made an agreement with Murdoch's firm sometime in 2020, where he received some sort of apology and a very large sum of money, which you could call a settlement, but I feel like you could also call that a bribe in order to not go to court. And I can understand how that would make Prince Harry feel disappointed and kind of duped. This is all happening behind the scenes while he is also trying to get an apology and deciding to take the papers to court because obviously no one else in the family wants that because that might hurt their position with the papers. Because again, it is very individualistic. It's very every man for himself when it comes to members of the British royal family and the media or couples and the media. I wanna talk about the King Charles of it all. So this is from an article that also came out from The Guardian today. Prince Harry claims that his grandmother and his brother were both on board with him seeking an apology from Murdoch. He claims that shortly before the wedding, they were told that nothing could be done to apologize to Her Majesty the Queen or the rest of the family because they would have to admit that not only did news of the world do phone hacking, but also the sun. And that would undermine their settlement strategy across other claims. I'm gonna read a quote and then we're gonna do a little history here. Quote, with hindsight, I now understand why staff at Clarence House representing Charles and Camilla were being so unhelpful and were seemingly blocking our every move as they had a specific long-term strategy to keep the media on side in order to smooth the way for my stepmother and father to be accepted by the British public as queen consort and king respectively when the time came. I'm just gonna say it. This is yet another example and a long line of examples of Prince Charles putting the good of himself and his relationship with media and the way he's portrayed by the media over the best interests of his sons. I think at this point, Charles and Camilla were in too deep with the media. Let me show you a little mind mapping that I did when I did my deep dive series into the media image rehab of Camilla. When Mark Boland worked for Prince Charles, but really Camilla, the goal was to rehab her image and that included getting chummy with the press. And so Camilla slowly but surely started to surround herself with people from the press. Among her friends are Jordy Gregg, who's a former editor of the Daily Mail. He helped advise her to hire Torben Andreas, also from the Daily Mail, for her now press secretary in 2022. She's also friendly with Piers Morgan of News of the World and The Sun fame. And then you have Mark Boland, who is friends with Rebecca Brooks, who also worked for News of the World and The Sun as an editor. 
going back to 1998 when the Highgrove meeting between Camilla and Prince William is leaked to the press. Who takes the fall for this? None other than Camilla's private secretary, Amanda McManus, who happens to be married to... James McManus, the executive for News Corp. What does News Corp own? Well, The Sun and News of the World, among other things. Amanda McManus was quietly hired back not too long after. This is a tangled web that they weave and they are in too deep with the media. This is Ariel selling her voice to get legs to get a man. This is the deal they made. And Prince Harry, and potentially Prince William, were going to get in the way of that. I really wonder now if people in the British royal family, working for the British royal family, had been braver if they could have taken down the sun as well. Now, one of the most interesting things this week when it comes to the coverage of Charles's coronation is that the royal rota have oddly gone very quiet on this latest deal or the latest signing of Meghan and the actual production with WME. And they've been trying to focus a little bit more on Charles and his coronation. And unsurprising to me, they have decided to write an entire article showing and telling us that Charles is indeed a king that cares about diversity. I mean, look at all the black folks that he's invited to play a part in his hat party. And remember in about two videos ago, we talked about the way Charles and the palace and the press, specifically the UK press, really underestimated Meghan. And they really assumed that she will indeed show up. And Charles and the palace would have then been able to say, well, you know, yeah, I'm a, I'm a king that cares about diversity. Look, my, my biracial daughter-in-law is here. You know, obviously. But Megan not coming and not having the children be in attendance or not even not even flying into the country clearly makes a statement. A statement that is not lost on Charles and his team. A statement that they have decided to respond to in this manner. Now it's disappointing to always see that there will be people of color who will be happily used for press. It's not surprising. I mean, it happens quite often. But interestingly enough, I was browsing through the comment section of the article and there were so many people who were not swayed by this article. So many people who are calling out the hypocrisy of it. A lot of people saying, hey, well, yeah, you're okay with, you know, people of color being involved um, in your coronation for the sake of good PR, right? But clearly you're not okay with diversity if it involves commingling with your bloodline. So a lot of people are not swayed by that. And I'm happy to see the PR efforts sort of fall flat. Now, of course, you know, royalists are going to see this as a win and they're going to try to amplify it. But quite honestly, they really haven't been amplifying it because they're too busy focusing on Harry and Meghan. <laughs> and um, these silly little, oh my God, she's gotten surgery. Or, oh my God, she's trying to look like Kate. It's insane. There's even articles where they're calling out the insanity of it. And a lot of people are like, uh, yeah, she doesn't want to look like Kate. First, the related headline, because I've seen this everywhere. Meghan Markle sparks surgery speculation with new looks. She wants to be Kate Middleton. No, she doesn't. Do you see how moisturized and glowy and dewy her skin is? Listen, I also am a fan of Kate Middleton, but if Meghan Markle wanted to look like Kate Middleton, she would have gone for the ashy look. This ain't the ashy look. That is not plastic surgery. That is just a very talented makeup artist recreating the bold glamour filter look in real life. Oh no, they are definitely covering the coronation. LOL, psych. They all act like Megan going back to her middle part and straightening her hair is enough to take down the monarchy. 
Obviously changing her makeup to the popular dewy summer glow is an attempt to take down this revered British institution. Says a woman with straightened hair also rocking a middle part. What say you, ma'am? Can you imagine if Megan brought back the hard side bang that was so popular on Laguna Beach? They would lose their shiz. Can I read you the part that's supposed to be an insult though? Quote, gone is the messy bun and the fresh face just stepped off the yoga mat, Megan. In her place is a glossy, razor sharp duchess, all primed and plumped up, like she's been dipped in double cream, rolled in cashmere and infused with 24 karat fabulousness. Can someone dip me in double cream, please? Also, obviously she doesn't look like she just rolled off a yoga mat. She was introducing a friend at a virtual conference. Here's what she's not saying though, although she's hinting at it. Quote, well, that explains it. Now we know why we haven't seen much of the Duchess of Sussex lately. She's clearly been working on a bit of a makeover, having some me time, investing in some self care, as young people say. They're insinuating plastic surgery. People look different at different angles and do not underestimate what good lighting can do for you. I have seen some of Meghan Markle's home videos. Lord, send thee a light kit and clearly someone did and set her up to perfection. If you see stills from the video, she looks like Meghan Markle. I hope she does like a side part and 90s grunge makeup next and just really throw them through a loop. <laughs> it's just... It's so stupid, and it continues to prove the point. Ha, huh, you deranged just thought you had a friend. It's actually lies on these two, not about these two. Ha 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 July 2021, two-thirds of Britain was polled to say they had no interest in the new Prince Harry book. Fast forward to January of 2023, it is the biggest selling autobiography of all time, and it sold 3.2 million copies in its first week. February 2021, an article comes out stating that over a half of Brits had no interest or would switch channels during the Oprah interview. Well, again, no interest, huh? Because 11 point something million viewers of Britain watched that interview, and it was one of their biggest interviews of all time. On June 5th of 2021, an article comes out stating that Little Bit was going to be born on Prince Philip's birthday. She was actually born a day before that article came out. But again, according to experts and according to polls, they are the most horrible people in the world and no one cares about them. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.